What do you think? Okay. So on this one, a comparative balance sheet for Carmelita Vases for December 31st, 2010 and 11. During 2011, the company had net income of 24,000 with building and equipment depreciation expense of 20,000 and 15,000 respectively. It also had amortization on its intangible assets in the amount of $5,000. It purchased some investments for 29, sold some investments for 37,500, on which it recorded a gain of 8,500. It issued 60,000 of long-term bonds at face value. And then it bought land in a warehouse through an $80,000 mortgage, and then it paid 10,000 to reduce that mortgage. It borrowed 15,000 by issuing notes payable, repaid some notes payable in the amount of 45, and declared and paid a cash dividend in the amount of nine. And then lastly, it bought some treasury stock for $5,000. Now, I'm not gonna write the header up there, but by this time, you know it would say the name of the company, Carmel, however you say that, Vases Inc. Statement of cash flows for the year ended December 31st, 2011. So, cash flows. Are you going to do the indirect method? I'm going to do the indirect method, yes, because that's what your final is. So, cash flows from operating. The indirect method starts with net income. Net income. And in this case, it's 24,000. We're then going to make some various adjustments. To reconcile net income to net cash flows from operating activities. So this first section here is going to be anything that is a non-cash deduction that is driving down that net income number or is non-operating in nature in the case of the gains on those uh, sale of the investments. So we've got depreciation. on the buildings for 20,000. We've got depreciation on equipment that was 15,000. And we have some in amortization that was five thousand. All of those are addbacks. All of those lowered net income, and we now want to add them back to get to cash because none of that was cash. Depreciation is a debit to depreciation and expense and a credit to accumulated depreciation. No cash involved. Then we've got a non-operating gain on sale of investments. Eight thousand five hundred. 
Now, if it's a gain, that increased net income, but it's not operating in nature. You're not in the business to buy and sell equipment. If you were, that would be revenue and cost of goods sold. All right? So if that gain increased net income, what do we need to do with it to get it back to operating cash? Do we add it or subtract it? We've got to subtract it, exactly. That's all the adjustments to reconcile net income to net cash flows from operating activities. We then are going to make changes I can spell right, in current assets, God bless you, and liabilities. If you wanted to shorten that for purposes of the final exam, you could just say changes in working capital. Because if you remember, and you're, we're going to re-emphasize it in the final chapter next week, working capital is current assets and current liabilities. So you could put, as an alternative, you could say changes in working capital, or what I just put. So we've got accounts receivable, we have inventory, and we've got prepaid expenses as current assets. Accounts receivable went from... 189,700 down to 184,000. So we had a decrease in accounts receivable. Of $5,000. So if accounts receivable went down, what did that do to cash? It went up. Thank you. It's inverse relationship. That means your customers are paying you, which is always a good thing. Inventory, however, also started the year at 6700 and went down. No, nope, wrong one. That's the next one. Inventory went from 200,000 up to 240,000. That's an increase in inventory. Forty thousand. Plus or minus? Minus. minus. And then the last one is the prepaid expenses. Started the year at 6,700 and went down to 3,700, a decrease in prepaid expenses. Three thousand dollars. And that is a positive. Current liabilities, we have three of those. We have accounts payable, started the year at 165,200, and ended the year at 117,700. So we have a decrease. in accounts payable. Forty-seven thousand five hundred. Is that a positive or a negative? Ooh, we got a difference of opinion. Who says positive? Yep. Nope. Current liabilities, if current assets have an inverse relationship, what do current liabilities have? A direct 
relationship. So a decrease in accounts payable means you're paying oh, you're actually paying. your suppliers. You're paying your suppliers. Everybody who gives you goods and services. So if you're paying them, that's using up cash. Oh, okay, the la the, there's only two. The, then there's accrued liabilities. Because the next one, it says notes payable, current. Notes payable, even the current portion of it, isn't a current liability. That's actually a uh, financing activity. So w ignore that next line. So the last one is accrued liabilities. Accrued liabilities started at 5200 and ended the year at 2700 that's another decrease. So if that 2,500 is a decrease of a current liability, that once again is a negative. If you add up the depreciation, everything that you reconciled cash flows from net income, all of the depreciation, amortization, and the gain, plus all of the changes in working capital, add all that column up, you get a negative 50,500. Add that to the net income figure and you get a negative 26,500, which is net cash flows from operating activities. That's the first of the three sections. The second section is cash flows from investing activities. This is the rest of the asset side of the balance sheet. Okay, so we've done the current assets, everything from cash down to prepaid expenses. So now we're going to do all of the net changes in long-term investments, land, buildings, depreciation we've already done, equipment, and intangible assets. So long-term investments went from 110,000 to 110,000. Looks like nothing happened. However, we knew in the body up here that we sold some investments for 37,500 that had a gain of 8,500. And then we also bought some investments for 29,000. All right? So if we sold something for 37,500 with a gain of 8,500, how much did we originally buy those investments for? 29,000, which is what exactly, that's why the investments account did not change. It went from 110 to 110, because we sold some old investments that had a cost of 29,000, and we bought some new investments that cost us 29,000. So we've got two things going on here. We've got purchase of investments for 29,000. That's a use of cash. So that's a negative. And then we have a sale of investments.
for 37500 which it told us how much the investments were sold at. You could have figured that out with the balance sheet, knowing that the investment account did not change. It went from 110 to 110. If all I did was tell you that the investments were sold at a gain of 8500 you could have calculated the sale price because you know that the old investments had to have been equal to $29,000 because the investment account never changed. So if you knew the, the book value of the investments were $29,000, you add the gain, you get the sale proceeds of $37,500. Okay? Now you also, let's see, land went from $80,300 to $90,000 300. So land, and it says in here that you bought a uh, um, land and a warehouse for an $80,000 mortgage. All right? So if we bought land and a, and a warehouse, and sure enough, if we go down to the uh, buildings, the buildings went from 230000 up to 300000 So that tells us that $80,000 purchase of the land and the warehouse were at ten and seventy. So we've got two things going on here. We purchased... Yes. Purchase of land for 10000 and 70000 for purchase of building. Was that mine? No. Oh. I used the same tone. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, did I forget to turn mine off? The last thing in the asset side is intangible assets. And intangible assets went from 10,000 to 5,000. So what happened there? So why did intangible assets go from 10,000 down to 5,000? We amortized it by $5,000. So that's what's going on there. So we don't have we didn't sell any intangible assets. That's not what caused the decrease. So if we add all this up, we get net cash flows from investing activities. of six that sixty two thousand sixty one thousand sorry five hundred seventy one thank you yes it is All right, the last part is financing activities. Financing activities are the rest of the liability section plus the stockholder's equity. So cash flows So, looking at the long-term liabilities, we have a mortgage payable which has, well, first off, we have some notes payable. Notes payable went in from 40000 down to 10000 But in the information up here, 
it tells us that we borrowed 45000 by issuing some new notes payable and we repaid some notes payable in the amount of 45000 So that net 30 is the change in notes payable, all of which are current. So we have the issue of notes payable. And that's 15000 That's the new one. And then we have a repayment. of notes payable. A negative 45. So the, the combination of those two is a decrease in notes payable of $30,000 and that's why the note payable went from 40 down to 10. Next, we have a mortgage payable. Mortgage payable went from 200 to 270. And it says up here that we issued $80,000 worth of mortgage to buy that land in the warehouse, the building, but we also paid 10,000 towards the overall mortgages. So that's why it went up by 70,000 because we borrowed 80 new but we paid 10 of it. So we have an issue of mortgage payable uh -huh. of 80,000 and then we have a repayment of mortgage payable. Ten thousand. The next line on our balance sheet here is bonds payable. Bonds payable went from 190 up to 250. And sure enough, inside that paragraph there, it said issued 60,000 of long-term bonds at face value. So that means there's no premium, no discounts. So we have an issue of bonds payable. Sixty thousand, and that's a plus. Go to the next line. That's it for the liabilities. Now we're into common stock. Common stock started the year at three hundred and seventy-five and ended the year at three seventy-five. And if you read through the the little paragraph up on top, nothing happened with common stock. Same with additional paid in capital on common stock. Started at 20, ended at 20. No problem there. Okay, retained earnings. Retained earnings went from 48,700 up to 63,700. So that's a net change of $15,000. However, what was net income? So what could possibly be the difference? If you had net income of 24,000 but only 15,000 was the increase in retained earnings, you got 9,000 of what? Thank you. Payment of dividends. And the problem, the textbook took a pity on you and gave you that number anyway. But on the final, I will not. You will have to figure that out on your own. But they told you in here that there were paid cash dividends in the amount of $9,000. And then the very last line on the balance sheet was Treasury stock started the year at $25,000, ended the year 
at 30,000. And sure enough, in the body of the text up there, it says purchase treasury stock in the amount of $5,000. Negative 5000 Add all that up and you get net cash flows from financing activities. of uh, 86,000. Add the negative cash flows from operating activities to the negative cash flows from investing activities to the positive cash flows from financing activities and you get a net decrease in cash of $12,000. And sure enough, cash at the beginning of the year was 76,400 and cash at the end of the year was 64,400. Oops. No negative. It was positive. So cash at the end of the year was 64,000. It's a masterpiece. How long did that take? About 30 minutes? Your final exam question will be greatly more simplified than this. <laughs> yes. You're going to have a comparative balance sheet and an income statement and I'll, I'm going to review that in uh, two weeks. So, yeah, two weeks from today will be the review for the final. All right. Does this make sense to everyone? You want to try one on your own? Right yeah. What do you mean, no? Why not? But you don't learn watching me right on the board. Yes, you see, you can watch me this over and over and over again because I'll post this today. <laughs> All right, I'll do another one, but I, you know, I just think you guys ought to do one. You got to take off the damn wheel. There you go. There we go. Once again.